In this video, we're going to be able to find the missing dimension of a cylinder when given two of the other values. So in this particular video, we will be finding the radius of a cylinder. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to say that you can find the radius of a cylinder if you are given the height and the volume. So in order to be successful in this lesson, you need to be able to do the following three things. You need to be able to choose the correct formula. Now for today, we're only working on cylinders. So that formula is pi times radius squared times height, right? The second thing you need to be able to do is substitute the given values from your problem into that formula by removing the correct variable. <clears throat> and the third thing is to solve the equation for the unknown variable. So for us today, the unknown variable is going to always be r. That is the only thing we're doing in this particular video. And in order to do that, we have to use some inverse operations, right? We're going to use some properties of equality to remove timesing by pi and to remove timesing by h. All right, so let's take a look at our first question here. If you're given the volume, you can find a missing measurement by working backwards and filling in your given variables. So if the volume of a cylinder is 3,694.51 cubic centimeters and the height is 6 centimeters, then you need to find the radius to the nearest whole number. So again, our formula is pi times radius squared times height. Right Now I can use these little timesing dots. I could also use parentheses like this to show my given values. So I'm going to take some notes over here so I know what I can fill in and where it goes. Right, So I know my volume, 3694.51. I know my height, 6, but I don't know my radius. So you're allowed to fill in these values here. So I'm going to fill in this volume here, erase that. I'm going to fill in the volume with 3694.51. I'm going to fill in my height. But I can't fill in my radius, so I got to write the letter R again. All right. Now, when I look on the left side of my equation here, I don't have any operations, so I can't simplify anything over here. But when I look at the right side of my problem, I see that I have a pi, a radius squared, and a 6. Now, I can't do radius squared because I don't know what it is. And it doesn't make sense to multiply it by 6, so I'm just going to get. 6r squared. Um, I suppose I could do 6 times pi, but pi is irrational and it's really kind of early for me to be making my problem go on for infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to commute some of these values here. Right? I'm, I see that they're in this order of pi times radius squared times 6, and I'm just going to commute this so that 6 and radius squared change places. So my left side will stay the same. And my right side will turn into pi times 6 times radius squared. Or I could even write like this. 6 times pi times radius squared. I mean, technically you don't have to do this. Most of you eventually will get so good at it that you won't even need to move these factor pieces around. But I want to show you that these two items are multiplying each other, right? Whether I multiply pi times r squared first or r squared times 6 first, eventually they're all going to multiply each other. And I'm doing this for a reason because if I want to get the letter r by itself, then that means I need to get rid of all of this. And all of this that's happening is multiplying by pi and multiplying by 6. And the inverse of that is dividing. And I can divide by two things at one time. And if you watch my previous lesson on how do you find the height of a cylinder when you're given the volume, then this should seem familiar to you. So 6 and pi are multiplying each other, and they are also multiplying r squared. So if I use division here, I can divide by that entire quantity at the same time. If they're both being divided, then I can do them both at the same time. So I'm going to write that over here as well. I'm going to get my calculator out, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to clear it out and start typing my left equation, left side of the equation here. So what I've got is 3, 6, 9, 4, point, 5, 1, divided by parentheses, 6 times pi. 
and that gives me 195.99999 so I'm going with a radius of about 196 right now I wish I was done but unfortunately I'm not you see this right here that means that the R is not alone so I figured out what the radius squared is but I want to know what just the radius is so in order to do that I need to get rid of this little square and in order to get rid of a square, you have to use the inverse, which is square rooting. So squares and square roots are opposite. But whatever you do to the right, you have to do to the left. And once we take the square root of 196, then we will have just the radius. And you may know the square root of 196, you may not, but on your calculator, the square root sign is above the square sign. So I'm gonna type square root 196. And there we have it. The radius is 14 centimeters. That wasn't so bad. Let's try another one. <clears throat> All right, let's read this question. And then let's start jotting down some notes. Volume, radius, height. So volume is 452.4. Height is four. Radius is unknown. I'm going to fill this value in, 452.4 equals pi times radius squared. I don't know, but height I do know. All right, so 452.4 is equal to 4 times pi times r squared. And I'm going to divide both sides by the group of 4 times pi. So what I did there? So I'm Canceling these out because 4 divided by 4 is 1 and pi divided by pi is 1. Unfortunately, it doesn't give me the r value, but r squared will do for now. So get your calculators out. Type 452.4 divided by the quantity 4 times pi. And I get 36.00000, so I'm going with 36. You have to write this step here that you're going to square root because that's showing the inverse operation. And we're going to get 6. The square root of 36 is 6. I know that, but you can use your calculator if you don't. All right, let's take a look at a question that might be presented a different way to you. The height of a cylinder is 12 centimeters and the volume is 300 pi centimeters cubed. So the volume is 300 pi. The radius, we don't know. The height is 12, so I'm gonna start filling these in. All right, I'm gonna be a little lazy this time, and I'm just gonna write it like this, because I know I can commute it. I don't have to write it. So I'm gonna write it like this this time, okay? Does that make sense? 12 reduces with 12, pi reduces with pi, and that's how I get an r squared all by itself. Now, before we pick up our calculator here, let's take a look at what's going on. 300 pi is being divided by 12 pi. And you see what happened over here? Pi in the numerator, pi in the denominator, they cancel each other out. Well, the same thing happens over there. So I don't even have to type all that nonsense in my calculator. I'm just gonna type 300 divided by 12. Whoops, forgot my other zero. and I get 25. Now, don't forget, that's r squared. So you take the square root of both sides, and that's how you get your actual radius. So if you don't know what the square root of 25 is, pick up your calculator, type the square root sign, right? Right above the x squared key. Okay. Take a look at one more together. The height of a cylinder is eight inches. The volume is 128 pi. Find the radius to the nearest whole number. I bet you don't even need to take notes anymore. 128 is the volume. The radius squared we don't know. The height is eight. Do you know what goes underneath here? Yep, the quantity eight pi. Now what I like about this one is when the answer is written in terms of pi, you can just cancel it out right from the beginning. Pick up your calculator. 128 divided by 8, 
And there's your radius squared. Remember, this is a radius squared. Was it 16? Yeah. So the last step, if you need to, is to take the square root of both sides. Now, most of you probably know this. You should know this. The square root of 16 is 4. And don't forget to put your units in there. I didn't leave enough space. All right, I think you're ready to try some on your own. Get your notebook paper out, pause the video, and give these a go. All right, you ready to check some answers? Let's see how you did. Number one, three centimeters. Number two, seven inches. Number three, eight millimeters. And last but not least, number four, three inches. All right, I hope you got some good practice in. That concludes this video on how to find a radius when you're given the volume and the height.